and it's going to be your fault. <laughs> we didn't use exactly those words, but we tested it. Life Alert. Ever wonder why Life Alert started out so successfully with those shocking ads? Ads that they got sued over, by the way, for causing distress. Um, you can take some of these ideas that are kind of funny, tongue-in-cheek, and test them a little bit. Because the, if the data pans out, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And you're only testing a small subset. I recommend for every month, if you do five tests, make one test crazy, four of them, based on what you think is an expert, and the data and the analytics will convert to that client. Genetic versus relative to the time period. Want a girlfriend, you can meet single women here. Or home alone on a Friday night. Want a girlfriend by Christmas? How do they know it's a Friday night and it's almost Christmas and I want a girlfriend? I don't know, but I'm definitely going to click on that ad. Uh, yeah, I am, I am very good. Um, mention prices or discounts, no regular $20, or leave it a mystery. Has anyone seen one of those websites where you have to add something to the card to see the price? There are reasons for that. It's the old school version of a our prices are too crazy to share on the radio. Please come on down to Crazy Sam's Appliance Mart and find out our prices. There are two reasons for that. One, there are legal contracts in place that you can't show so far under MSRP unless the customer has an intent to buy. Most of the time, it's when you're in Crazy Sam's um, Appliance Mart, you're probably going to buy the washer and dryer because you've already went all the way down there. Same thing works online. A lot of times when you see the, you can't see this until you add it to the cart, a lot of times it's not true. They're just trying to do it as a sales technique. Trust logos versus, no, I'm trust logos. Trust logos are a funny thing. Who here um, has a, a better business bureau logo on one of your client sites? Okay, a couple. And for those of you that do, can you pay the Better Business Bureau the required additional money on top of their membership fees for the right to use that logo? They will sue. Trust me on this. Um, but Better Business Bureau logo is funny. Anyone here heard of my pillow? The Pillow King, late night infomercials. He's from my neck of the woods, Minnesota, drug addict and Pillow King. Um, <laughs> it's true, look it up. He was homeless and then he made pillows. Um, um, full disclosure, I have my pillow, I love it. But overnight, he went from an A plus rating to an F. Overnight. The reason doesn't matter, but that really hurt his brand because he focused so much on the trust logos and he didn't do the different tests that were not related to just relying on the Better Business Bureau. Trust logos are also kind of funny. America's Got Talent. Anyone here watch America's Got Talent? Yeah, a couple people? Okay. The most common uh, the use of the America's Got Talent as seen on AGT trust logo are the people that got locked out and kicked out the first round. Because when you see them at a comedy club and you say, oh, it's Bob Dole from America, as seen on America's Got Talent. I don't know who Bob Dole is. Um, and yes, I understand that that's a real person when you give an example. <laughs> But, um, um, and you know, the, a season lasts like 12 years, so you have to remember that first round. So he, he was on a very Scott talent, he must be good. So they're kind of funny. Uh, weapons of influence. Uh, scarcity, authority, liking, social proof. Sometimes you can put things like, you probably seen on a website, like you're on hotels.com. Oh, this hotel's been booked 12 times in the last hour, things like that. You can take that stuff. There's plugins for WordPress that do things like that. Like, Sally from Illinois just bought this product. Buy it now. Things like that. Um, scarcity. All supplies last. You know, show how many tickets are left. This WordCamp did that. They, had the they showed how many tickets were left um, on the ticket page, I believe. It's all WordCamps, I believe, have that in their ticket system. Um, consistency. Take the small steps. Take lots of small guesses until you, until you get to, to the end. Um, walk them through the funnel. Appeal to the eight universal desires. Spiral of life, life extension, enjoyment of food and beverages, um, freedom from fear, pain and danger, companionship, comfortable living conditions, be superior, keeping up with the Joneses. Um, keeping up with the Joneses is funny. So there are a bunch of people in the WordPress community that travel a lot, a lot. You see them in all the word camps. I'd like to think I'm one of those people. Um, and you like you hear me say quite a bit, and for those of you in this room, you probably heard me say this exact phrase. I traveled 179 nights last year. Yep. So I am very proud of that because I am very competitive with two people in the WordPress community: <laughs> Dwayne from Pantheon and Adam Warner from SiteLock. 
They brag about how many miles they do, and then I have to keep up with that. And someone said, oh, sorry, guys, you guys are all great. You, all, you go to a lot of work camps. It's not a competition. It is a competition, and I am winning. But <laughs> it's very funny because I am the type of guy that likes the lounges. It was one of those things where Chris, uh, um, Chris um, Edwards, ah, geez. This is not my clicker. There we go. Uh, Chris and Sandy Edwards, um, they're in Orlando, and I was like, hey, I'm going to SeaWorld, let's do these things, blah, 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 and then Chris was like, yeah, so Sandy called me and said that you wanted to do the reserved seating and uh, dine with Shenmue and all this stuff, and he's like, a course demo. It's so bad, there's actually a hashtag called demo experience about how I, when I visit a city, I make people's bank accounts go down. Because I like you know, the Joneses, I like the premium experiences. I am perfect for that sort of technique. Um, other techniques are use short words. Short words are easier to read. Um, we can think about one of the gentlemen that we looked at in an earlier example. He uses lots of short words in his communications. Um, you can be controversial in global warning to hoax. You know, find out here. Um, ask a question. Has the love left your relationship? Vote to five senses. Sight, hearing, taste, smell. All these can be used in digital. I used to sell timeshare. Yep, that was me. I was a top timeshare sales guy in the country. I made a lot of money. Um, didn't sleep that well at night, but I made a lot of money. Um, but guess what? You know what sold? Not the math that said, oh, you're going to break even, blah, 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 and all that, because you never took you on a timeshare. Um, it was, imagine waking up and smelling the ocean when you're staying at our San Diego resort, blah, 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 and all that wonderful stuff. You know, you feel the 260 motorcycle engine beneath you. Because nobody buys on facts. Nobody. I don't care if you're talking about the CFO of Cisco, all the way down to a single mom. People buy an emotion and they justify it with logic every single time. And we can use this in our testing. Complain, have fun. You can have so much fun with someone else's brain with AB testing. Um, and again, one crazy test or normal test. Look at the case studies, look at the white papers. You don't. I know what some tests you can do. You can go to HubSpot, they have an AV testing lab. You can go to VWO, which stands for Visual Website Optimizer. They have a testing lab that shows that it shows you tests you can implement on your own site and what they think will be most successful based on what they think they know of their site. But I promise you, I promise you so much, what you think you know when you launch that website will be wrong. It will be. Will that website probably do better than it did before? Maybe. Will it do worse? Maybe. Is that okay? Yes. Because guess what? If you tell the client when you launch this site, it's probably not going to work. It will get them in the mindset of saying, this is our best guess. We're going to take all the data we know, all the analytics, all the research you've given us, and we're going to make our best first attempt. And then we're going to do testing every single month. And guess what? You're going to bill for this every single month. And you know how nice it is to be able to bill? for 20 hours or five hours or whatever you decide to do in your packages every single month without having to get a new client every single week. It is not that hard. And if you get enough of this, it scales up. It scales up fast. One $500 project a day, five days a week, is $100,000 a year. You can easily probably do that with testing if you put the client in the mindset in the beginning. So let's talk about that book and where to find it. Go to dotcomsecretslabs.com slash free dash book. This is a book called Russell Brunt by Russell Brunson. He's the owner of ClickFunnels. He started in the direct response industry selling supplements, how to make potato guns, things like that. Um, he was also featured on CNBC's The Profit on the Flex Watch episode, if you happen to know that. I'm going to walk you through how to purchase this book, but I'm also going to show you where the upsells are. Because a lot of people uh, get really bad at me when they you know, spend 500 bucks. Try to get a free book. Um, I don't. I'm not related to this. I don't get any commission. But I think it's a really good book that I pulled that chart from. And the book's called 108 Split Test Winners. So you go to this page, fill out the form. Okay, great. You're gonna get an upsell offer. Say no thanks. You can go to another page. You click no thanks at the bottom of that page. You go to another page. You click no thanks on the bottom of that page. <laughs> you can go to another page and close the tab. Click anything you bought something. You get an email, you unsubscribe if you'd like to. Here's the thing. I have paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars for his training. I really like his training. But I get this with a huge caveat. His training is geared in the direct response industry. 
And a lot of people have a really hard time looking past examples of supplements and weight loss coaching and how it can apply to business coaching or um, to selling TV ads or whatever your market is. The ideas are the same. Just the examples, because that's what they focus on, are a little bit different. So try one of his free products before you spend on the paid products. And again, a lot of his products focus on his tools. The solutions are agnostic. Yeah, they might say, oh, here's what we do in Collect Funnels. You can use it using any of the tools that we talked about. Same thing with HubSpot. That they have a course on growth driven design, which is nothing more than A-B testing on a monthly retainer basis. And guess what? It recommends to use HubSpot's CMS. Because HubSpot's the guy who people that are making the course. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so with that, we have about six minutes. Any questions, comments, or death threats? <laughs> I have two questions for you. Uh, the first one is, this is to what you consider sort of perfectly good results that obviously you don't want to test and you find people who think yes, and they might have been done as a means for you to And also the other question, actually, I think that was it. Sure, so the question was, um, what is considered statistically relevant, because let's say you have 20 visitors to a page and you get five clicks, that's 25%, but maybe the sample rate's not large enough or skewed that. That's why I recommend those tools, because those tools will tell you if you get enough traffic in and if you need to keep testing, or if it's statistically relevant or not, or if it's not sure. But we actually give you a confidence score for most other tools. Um, I wasn't familiar with uh, AB Tasty, but did it tell you a similar thing? Like, you know, they'll do the math for you. So that's why I recommend a third-party tool. And the one thing I will recommend highly is to use a professional tool, because if you do this on your own and you route the traffic on your own, you will run the real risk of Google indexing your test. And that's the last thing you want to do, is you don't want Google to index a test until it becomes production. So I use VWO personally. I'm not saying it's the best. It's just what I personally use. And the way that works is you just put a JavaScript in the theme file, and it'll change it on the browser side. Um, on the fly. So it actually doesn't change anything on the production side. What are the tools that you said you um, Optimizely or BWO? Visual Web Set Optimizer. Are the two I personally have used? There are a lot out there. There are some native WordPress plugins. I'm not saying those are bad at all. This gentleman's used AB Tasty. Um, that's just what I have familiarity with. Um, play around with them. You can get free trials for most of these and find which ones that you like. Yep. Uh, so, in picking a winner, so you have, is there a certain distance that you need between the two um, variants? So, if one person wins, or one variant wins by like 1%, like, like that's not enough. Is, like, is there a certain... Sure, so, yeah, so like what the percentage difference between like the winner and the yeah. next variant is. Um, VWO usually looks between 6 to 12 percent, so I really rely on their algorithm. Um, but I look for at least a 10 percent difference and a 10 percent lift, and I try to reproduce that of different parts of, the, of that same property. Um, and I like to at least get 20,000 people through a test before I even consider the results. Um, your mileage may vary. If you have a low traffic website, only test one thing at a time, and it might take you two and a half weeks to get a result, but the same philosophy still works. Somebody else have a question? It's going to be directly related to the goals that we set down. So every test I do, I write down a goal with the client, and we say we're going to change this, and we're going to change this body color to red because we believe red is a color that's going to make people want to click it. And we believe this to be true because of this case study we read, blah, blah, blah. So look at their KPIs and look at what's most important to their bottom line and what's going to give you those quick wins. And look at the site and use your expertise and say, you know what? They really care about card abandonment. So maybe we'll try a different card. We'll try a single page checkout versus a multi-page checkout. Um, and just look for those quick wins. Because those first couple months, you have to have winners. Otherwise, the client's not going to believe you when you say this process does work, please give me time. If you deliver three months of nothing but, well, we know what doesn't work. You know, so I would say look for those quick wins based directly on what they care most about. Did I answer your question? Oh. Is there anyone else? Okay. Uh, I might throw out um, the ABC, BWO, and obviously our papers. Because I want to cover it and subscribe. Um, 
Uh, yep, optimized by Google's free. Um, Google, yeah. BWO does it for free tier though. So it's uh, you can run five thousand people, I believe, do a test. So it's good for low traffic websites and if you have a single product. But the other ones are paid, of course. Yeah. BWO. And optimized is like a 14 day trial. Best thing to do is go to growthdrivendesign.com, download their Excel sheet, fill in your rates, and use what's in there. I, they've done the math. They've tested hundreds and hundreds of agencies. I take their I, I take their examples, um, and it all depends on your hourly rate. So if your normal hourly rate is you know a hundred dollars an hour and you think for this project it's going to take this long, I mean, five hours for research, five hours for this, five hours for that, you just kind of fill it out and you say, okay, in a perfect world, how much would it cost me to, to build a package for this? And you offer a good, better, best. So you do your ideal scenario, you do your hourly rate on it, and that's it. Then you cut that in half, that you're good, and then you go in the middle for the better. 99% of the time, people will buy your middle package every single time. Because you have a throwaway package, no, it's too cheap, I'm not cheap, no, it's too expensive, I'm not Rockefeller, I'm going to do the middle one. So you need to look at the property and say how much time would I spend if I had a blank check for them for me to do the best job for my life. One more. Which one? Growth driven design. Yep. And maybe one last question and I have to be done. Did you have a question? Okay, cool. Thank you so much. I will be around. My name is Mike Dem. You can find me at MP Mike on Twitter.